Hi, I'm Jeff Harper. I live in South uh, Central Virginia. I've lived here since uh, 1994. I've been a PBS mem associate member. I started around 1990. I became a, a regular member in 2003. At present, I'm a uh, cancer researcher at the University of Virginia. I am retiring in two weeks. I hope I'm going to be able to do more of my planned hunts and uh, I look forward to uh, to doing some things that I haven't been able to as far as hunting and going to shoots and right, I was given a little fiberglass bow in my I don't know 10 12 years old and I, I enjoyed shooting at the local frogs and just uh, shooting the bow in, in general I uh, was in Boy Scouts from age 8 until 16 and of course at scout camps I would I would be involved shooting a bow and arrow but I really uh, didn't have the wherewithal to buy the equipment I needed to, to be a bow hunter then. Uh, went to uh, college, uh, I even took a uh, physical education credit course uh, shooting a bow and uh, then I finally uh, I went out and I bought a, uh, a cheap compound bow I didn't know anything. I had no mentors. My my father didn't hunt, so I uh, most of the times we were fly fishing or fishing, and so uh, I got into hunting myself. Bought a bow. Uh, I figured out I wasn't really able to do a quality hunt for myself without some mentoring. I was living in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and I got involved in the Guilford Bow Hunters found a fellow that would help mentor me, got me a, a quality bow, a matched set of arrows, <laughs> uh, and uh, took me to one of his favorite places to hunt. I took my first two uh, deer harvests with a, uh, with a uh, bear whitetail two uh, bow. So that's what got me started. Then I met a, a, a PhD chemist at uh, where I worked in Greensboro who was a uh, uh, senior council member of the PBS and of course from there uh, I had to get a traditional bow uh, and uh, some arrows. I bought my first bow from Screaming Eagle Archery, uh, a Martin Hatfield takedown and got all my equipment together and uh, harassed my, uh, my PBS mentor John Vargo to death learning how to shoot. I, uh, I remember uh, the first time I had a, a close encounter with a white tail with my recurve bow and I I missed and uh, I came back and I told John Vargo I said uh, you know I could have killed that deer with my compound bow I could have killed that deer and John just looked at me deadpan and he said if all you want to do is kill a deer by all means use your compound <laughs> it's the total experience of the hunt it's preparation and the anticipation. Uh, one of the reasons I, I bow hunt with traditional gear is because I love to shoot my bow and it takes a lot of practice uh, and it's fun. I don't hunt to just kill an animal. I don't whack them and stack them. I enjoy the sights and the sounds and the smells of the woods. It's you step out of this world, this uh, community of, of cars and work and all, and you step into a total pastoral scene, and then a deer walks in, and uh, the excitement of the predator-prey relationship, is it going to be in close, is the wind right? I love the challenge of, of setting up a good in a good location, and the tracking of an animal after the shot, uh, that's, nobody really talks about that, but there's a lot of skill involved in uh, determining where you hit the animal, because when the adrenaline's pumping, it's, it's hard to remember exactly what happened. It's real pleasing to be able to, uh, to furnish my family with, with venison that I've taken, and uh, it's, it's a reward. Uh, it's, it's like shooting a, a uh, a traditional bow. There's a reward in what you put into something. Uh, if I wanted to shoot a compound, and I may go back to a compound if I physically am not able to, but 
putting sights on the animal and pulling that trigger is not what I call bow hunting. So, uh, uh, in the last four years I've been hunting with a uh, ACS longbow at 57 pounds at my draw. I draw 29 and a half inches. Uh, my shoulders are starting to say, hey, maybe uh, at 63 it's time to uh, slow down a little bit. So with my retirement em eminent, I've uh, purchased myself a retirement bow, which is a, a new Centaur, which is 48 pounds at my draw. Um, I bought a, sh a uh, shorter long bow. It's, uh, my, my ACS is 64 inches, so it makes it a little problematic to shoot out of a hunting blind. I've heard good things about Centaur, so I bought a Centaur that's 60 inches and I'm in the process of uh, getting it where I need to to be, be hunt worthy uh, and uh, that leads into what I shoot, I sh uh, what type of arrows. I shoot a uh, gold tip carbon. I have in the past shot cedars that I made myself. I find that uh, the, the carbon arrows have less uh, parallax, less movement of the arrow, therefore they're more like a dead blow hammer hitting that animal and they, you get a, uh, a pass through or, or two, two blood channels, uh, wounds dripping blood and it's easier to track. Uh, you put it in the boiler room and uh, the rest is a, a good thing. I shoot uh, five inch feathers so that the uh, arrow straightens itself out a little better but I found with this centaur that I bear shaft, I was bear shaft tuning and I was shooting my bear shafts better than my uh, fletched arrows. Uh, so I'm a bow junkie. Uh, I'm still <laughs> toying with the idea of, of, of different bows. There's always another one on the horizon that I haven't owned yet. I've had Robertson's. I've had, uh, I've had a, a lot of different bows. <laughs> nice. Well, I, uh, I started my shooting, by uh, my instinctive shooting, by reading Fred Asbell's book. And uh, so it's uh, pretty much pick a spot, draw back, focus on the spot, and release. Uh, there's a lot more to it. I've, uh, I've been chased by the target panic monster uh, in the past. It, it still rears its ugly head every now and then. But uh, I'm pretty much uh, just instinctive. Uh, sometimes I'll have split vision and I'll see the, the, the actual arrow in my, my second vision. Uh, pointing directly at the target. Well, I have to say that uh, going to the land of the giant whitetails in, in Iowa on John Vargo's property is... I, I went out there twice. I saw my first booner out there. Uh, the first hunt I went on I was memorable because I saw so many deer. Uh, and a 180 pound deer when you're used to seeing uh, these eastern whitetails that average 125 to 140, they just look like cows out there. They're, they're huge. But the second time I went to Iowa at John's place, I was uh, I wrote an article. It's in the PBS magazine called uh, The Iowa Letdown. The reason I wrote that is I had to let down on three different Pope and Young quality bucks uh, because for one reason or another, they spotted me. Uh, one I yelled at until he stopped and turned around and looked at me. I was at full draw, and it was just too much of a quartering away shot. Uh, the other, other one, one heard me hit the tree stand with the tip of my Schaefer longbow. Uh, he stopped and looked at me, and I had to let down on him. And another one, uh, I got caught trying to get into a tree, and I was hiding behind a huge white oak, and I drew on him, and he stood there looking at me. And we know you don't shoot it, alert deer. It's just not a good thing. But, after all said and done, I did manage to take a, uh, a large uh, whitetail on John's place. And if he hadn't busted the tine the night before uh, I took him, he probably would have been about 135 class. But it's uh, a beautiful 10-pointer. He's actually over my right shoulder on the wall. I don't know if we have that in camera or not. But, uh, yeah, that, that guy right there. Um, that was memorable. Uh, it was a frosty cold morning. Um, I was up in a shingle oak on one of John's permanent stands and he came 
came in in a transition area from real thick trees into this wooded area. He came right by me. I, I came to full draw. I was shaking so bad that I didn't know whether I should even try to shoot. Luckily, this uh, eight-foot cedar uh, jumped up right between us, and I had to let down, and he walked through the cedar, and then I got my composure, and I, uh, I put the, a perfect shot just above his elbow, double-lunged him. And uh, he went 185 pounds, and he only ran 40 yards. And I can see it like it was yesterday. Uh, I walked up on him and, and um, put my bow on him, took a picture, got my gear together, and I was going to drag him down to a creek bottom and, uh, and field dress him down in the creek bottom. I, I had texted John and told him I had taken one. And John... I grabbed a hold of his antler and went to turn him, and I went, oh, <laughs> 185 pounds, dead weight. Thank God it was downhill. And I got him down, uh, dressed him out. John showed up, backed his truck up as far as he could get to me, and the two of us strained to get him out of that creek bottom and get him up to the truck. I would say the, the reason I was really attracted to the PBS was the ethics. I, uh, I really understand that uh, to keep our sport of archery, uh, we need to be very cognizant of, of, of our ethics. That means uh, things like I've seen people drive down the road with a, with a gutted deer on their tailgate showing it off. You know, and if, if someone who sees that and is sitting on the fence about voting for hunters' rights, they're going to vote the other way. They're going to, they're going to you know, say, no, I don't like what those guys do. So I saw PBS as, as a very ethical uh, group of guys. And uh, my mentor uh, saw my love of archery. I saw his love of archery. Uh, the first banquet I went to in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, it was it was awesome. Just to, it, the feeling of being around like-minded individuals. That uh, this isn't just a hobby. This is a passion, and uh, PBS is passionate about bow hunting, and I wanted to be part of that. Well, I think PBS and its ethics will help us retain bow hunting as a sport. Uh, that's. In essence, why I think it's important for me is if I if I can show that uh, the professionalism of being an ethical bow hunter uh, keeps this sport alive for my grandkids, uh, it's it's well worth the effort. Uh, the cost is minimal. The, for just being an associate, people will, well, why would I want to be an associate? You know, and I said, well, you know, the price of the magazine's worth worth the membership alone. I said, and you get to be with a group of great guys, and now now that we're having all of these membership hunts, odd year gatherings, and uh, it's, there's just a lot of neat stuff that you can, you can get involved in, go to, and uh, you can feel the brother, brotherhood or sisterhood. Uh, you can just, you can feel the, uh, the warmth. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Today's youth are more inclined to, to get things, they want things quickly, done quickly and easily. And I think the more effort you put into something, the, the more uh, joy you get from that effort. Well, um, I'll, I'll, of course, I'll, I'll do a shout out to my mentor, John Vargo, who uh, is probably one of the most, most ethical bow hunters I've ever met. Uh, he, uh, some of his uh, stories and all, um, like passing on a, a bull elk only, you know, 15 yards away because it's the wrong shot angle, or shot angle, and you've, you know, you've spent months preparing. It's just bravo. That's good stuff right there. I am Jeff Harper, and I am the PBS.